Hello! Today I want to talk about my very first book club experience. We were read Greg Egan's Diaspora, published in 1997, so I want to give you a little bit of an overview of what I thought about the book, what it's about, and how I like being in a book club. So Diaspora is a, a science fiction novel which was incredibly out of my comfort zone, but still um, I was looking forward to discussing a book with other people that liked to read, so I pushed through. The story of Diaspora begins in the late 21st century, um, I, I believe 2900 and something. The human race, if you want to call it that, has been divided into three different types of humanities, if you like. There are the fleshers, which are, uh, are homo sapiens, which are, we are fleshers, you would say, um, but fleshers have also divided into all kinds of different subgroups depending on which genetic strands they decided to um, modify. There's the Gleisner robots, which um, I believe were invented by a company, hence Gleisner robots, and they are robots in flesher form, so they would look like you and me, but with an artificial intelligence and conscience, consciousness uh, embedded within them. And then there are the citizens, so-called citizens, which make up most of humanity. And citizens are grouped together in communities, in the polis. And basically this is a huge network, um, a huge software, in which, in the beginning, actual flesher personalities, if you like, were uh, developed by cloning and uh, changing genetic information, mixing and matching, and this huge software basically has created individuals. And in the beginning of the book, we follow Yatima, who goes through orphanogenesis or something like that, uh, which basically means he's an orphan, he ha doesn't have any uh, parents, so he is created solely through the software. And we, in the first chapter of the book, uh, get insight into how um, the theory of mind develops within this network, how personalities develop, um, and that's fascinating. Like, just, just to take that just to say that right out, that I think was a really intriguing beginning to a book. When you're reading it, you you really are thrown in at the deep end, which is nice because the character Yatima also is, doesn't have a clue what's going on around them. I didn't have a clue, all this artificial intelligence in the software, I didn't know how to imagine that. Um, so that was a great beginning. And then the storyline unfolds following Yatima and also a few other characters, how they, for instance, travel to Earth, and there is a big cosmic disaster that um, basically annihilate, annihilates most fleshes that live on Earth. Uh, they try to prevent a similar catastrophe happening in the future, but I don't want to take too much away the storyline spans over many hundreds of years, which is possible because, of course, these characters aren't mortal in the same way that you and me would be. So, if that wasn't all too confusing and possibly put you off immediately, the most popular opinion in our book club when we discussed it was that we liked the book, but we didn't enjoy it. It is difficult to get into. There is a lot of sciencey talk. It's difficult to get into and he does, I found, go on quite of a tangent at times. There's not such a clear-cut storyline, which perhaps is also due to the fact that the book originally is based on a short story that Greg Egan wrote. But just to throw at you some of the themes that we discussed, we talked about the meaning of life. <laughs> um, <clears throat> in this book, um, most individuals, of course, are immortal. So that, for us, changed what a possible meaning of life could be if you don't fear death, obviously. The purpose of your life can also not be to procreate. Families aren't necessary. You don't have to have children. You, 
you may not even that, that that may not actually be a concept anyway having children and within that framework we found it really dif really interesting to discuss the concept of community and citizenship in this book because family doesn't exist but the characters still form relationships and not only what's the meaning of life but what is your identity if cloning is a thing a normal thing if you can choose to v develop certain parts of your identity because you can just mix and match certain ones and zeros in your software and form your identity choose to forget certain memories choose to acquire memories of one of your clones um but what does that mean your identity is not closed off as we tend to feel as humans we know where we end um, and we discuss the meaning of science in the book. Greg Egan comes across as quite a science geek um, because a lot of the book does focus on it. In my opinion, sometimes at the cost of the storyline. And even though I am working on my PhD and therefore I almost am forced to believe that research is very important and we can answer big questions by remaining curious, I struggle to believe that science science is the meaning of life that's just taking it a bit too far for me um but you know perhaps perhaps in a life where i couldn't form relationships in the same way i can now maybe um mathematics and physics and science on the whole would uh, take on a bigger role in my life and one last one that you can expertly discuss when reading this book is the question of gender because to a large extent Greg Egan chooses not to use gender pronouns which um, I needed some time to get into. I did not have a lot of experience in reading, reading anything really um, that didn't specify genders um, but my inexperience in doing that made it quite interesting for me because I found myself automatically ascribing genders to certain characters even though they were supposed to be gender neutral. Um, so that says a lot about how entrenched that is in our minds and how um, sometimes how unflexible we are as well uh, to not categorize people. So those were all the concepts we discussed and questions we touched upon. I believe this might not be the easiest place to begin with science fiction or, or maybe not easiest maybe that's the wrong word the most satisfying um in our group someone actually recommended the irobot books instead just as a sort of epic and impressing science fiction read i've also not read those i really wasn't lying i don't tend to read science fiction i would really like to hear from any of you if you've read this or if you haven't if you have science fiction recommendations that uh, a science fiction newbie like me might enjoy and I'm really looking forward to my next meeting in the book club I loved discussing it with real life people I actually also really liked that this was a book that I wouldn't have chosen to read by myself I wouldn't have finished this book if I hadn't had the motivation of discussing it later so what an eye-opener. Uh, book club broadens your horizons, I think. Uh, so, and with that, um, I hope you have a wonderful day with a very good book, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.